Hello, people of YouTube! My name is Steve Gray. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to be talking about Demon Slayer Season 2, Episode 9. And let me tell you, the only thing disappointing about this entire episode was the massive frigging cliffhanger we were left with. So now I'm going to be super annoyed for a week because I want to know what happens. So maybe I will go you know, spoil myself with the manga, because I'm thinking about it, in all honesty, because this was just way too massive of a cliffhanger uh, to end on, and even as I'm doing this review, it is eating at me from the insides. So, uh, we'll see what happens with that. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything for you if I do choose to read the manga, so you won't have to worry about any of that. So, we start this episode off with Gutaro, uh, Tanjiro, Tengen, all fighting each other, and it looks like it's finally going to be in their favor. You know, we start off where we ended last episode, where the poison kicked in, he wasn't able to regenerate his legs immediately, um, and it looked like we were going to be good to go. Uh, however, he, you know, really wasn't stunned all that long, unfortunately. I mean, maybe for like 30 seconds to a minute, at max, um, and then he was able to regenerate his legs. Um, he then got mad at one of Tengen's wives, so he went after her, because he was like, how dare you, you know, how dare you, somebody like you, do something like that to me. So he goes up there, and then the sashes come in. Uh, Tanjiro gets knocked away in the process, uh, but Tengen, Uzai, whatever you want to call him, he is fighting off all of the sashes, and there's really nothing he can do to go defend his wife. So Tanjiro obviously goes to the rescue, gets her out of there just in time. Uh, he is not able to use the, the Himuragi Kagura. Um, he is still using water breathing, but at the same time, he is able to slightly modify his water breathing and combine uh, the Kagura into kind of one interesting looking thing. Uh, we only really get to see it for a split second because he, he doesn't really, he's not able to maintain it uh, for that long. He can use it for, you know, like a split second here and there in his injured state. Uh, but but he's, he's getting worn down. You know, he's got a huge gash in his shoulder, cut up, he's bloody. Uh, all of them are worn down. You know, freaking Tengen is poisoned at this point in time. Um, and it, it is just a process. So Tengen after that manages to break free, jump on the roof. And both of them are, you know, fighting the upper <laughs> upper rank six to the point where they get their swords right next to his throat. And they're almost there. And then he was and then Gotaro is like, oh, you think you're gonna be able to uh, actually kill me? <laughs> That's hilarious. He has both of his sides up by his neck, defending himself. And uh, they almost cut through, but then the scythes start going onto the swords, which is kind of creepy. Like, like his, his bodily fluids uh, start going onto the swords. And then, uh, you know, the one, uh, the one wife of Tengen knocks Tanjiro away. And then Uzai is on the ground with Gutaro fighting him by himself. And then the sashes come out again. And then... Inosuke and Zenitsu are like, Tanjiro, are you able to move? Are you able to fight? Tanjiro's like, yes, I can still do water breathing at this point in time. So, uh, his, you know, they push kind of push his wife in the background, say, you know, get to a point of safety, go defend yourself with that, or figure out a way uh, to be useful at a later state. So all three of them combined now are fighting Daki in her more powerful state. Uh, and even Zenitsu says, you know, don't worry about... Uh, you know, cutting off both of their heads at the same time. If we can just separate the head, it makes them a lot weaker. Uh, then we can just go and get the other one's head. You know, separate the head from the body, bring it away somewhere else. And there's really nothing to it. You know, then then we can all team up on the other one. So, they're, Tondra, what happens is Tanjiro and Zenisu are actually fighting off the sashes for Inosuke to run up the middle with his beast form, eighth form. Uh, his muscles get all swollen and beefy and veins are sticking out and he sprints up and he gets to her neck and he can't get and he can't cut through so he starts using his swords like a saw and freaking saws off Daki's head and then we're thinking oh finally you know we're in the green uh battle's going well he'll be good to go 
Uh, and then Inosuke's like, all right, you guys go <laughs> go help Uzai. I'm going to run off with her head. Uh, and then she is like, how dare you behead me? You know, starts whining like a 12-year-old again. 10-year-old, whatever age range you want to say. Uh, so she tries to use her hair in order to strike Inosuke, and Inosuke chops it off really easily. He's like, you want? He's like, yo, you're a lot less more powerful uh, with without your head. You know, there's really not a lot you can do. Some of the sashes are still flying around, um, but not to the extent as they were when her head was attached. But Gutaro being best brother unfortunately uh the the pro probably you know would like stop my heart in this episode uh stabs Inosuke through the chest we don't know if Inosuke is dead uh we don't know if his heart got hit uh all we know is that he got stabbed through the chest uh Gotaro got his sister's head back and Inosuke is done like, he, he is not coming back for the rest of this fight. If you just took a sword through your chest, whether it hits your heart or not, um, you're done. I mean, that's there's there's no question about it. He's going to be probably done for the rest of the battle. I highly doubt he's going to get back up for the rest of the battle. So I assume that he is just done. So immediately after that, all these sashes start going after Zenitsu and Tanjiro, and Zenitsu actually pushes Tanjiro out of the way because Tanjiro is so tired to the point where he's not fully paying attention in the battle anymore, uh, which, if you are familiar with any fighting game whatsoever, very bad idea. The second you stop paying attention, you are dead. So Zenitsu pushes Tanjiro out of the way. This building gets destroyed in the process. I assume Daki gets her head back uh, shortly after. We actually haven't seen that yet. But then we see what is also a worst possible scenario. Uh, Tengen on the ground, the poison spreading with his arm cut off. Like, like right there. Like, his arm gets cut off. Unfortunately, uh, the only thing that, that kind of annoyed me was we didn't actually get to see that happen. I mean, I would have loved to see that fighting sequence where Tengen actually got his arm chopped off. Maybe we'll get to see that, um, like, at the beginning of next episode, episode 10. We only have two episodes left. So, one of two things, I think is going to happen um either somehow some way uh Tengen is going to get back up with his arm chopped off uh and help save the day between the three of them because then it's going to be you know three out of one if they focus on one at a time Daki's head is still cut off so if they get to you know Gotaro in time before he can reattach Daki's head and get his head chopped off that might help uh or the other option is Inosuke is dead Tengen is now dead um, and then Zenitsu realizes that there's really nothing else that they can do at this point in time in his state, and he just grabs Tanjiro and Nezuko in, you know, Thunder Breast out of there. Um, I don't know if that's going to be the case. I don't know if that's how this is going to end. I mean, they literally said defeat of an upper rank, which technically, yes, Daki got her head cut off again, <laughs> uh, but, um, they're not anywhere near close to this happening. So at this present moment, we have no idea whether or not Inosuke is dead or alive. Uh, same goes to Tengen. He is just on the ground. Um, it's basic. Zenitsu, you know, got kind of caught up a little bit in the collapsing building. So we don't really know where he is either. Uh, and then Tanjiro is just beat to crap standing there, uh, presumably waiting for his death at this point in time you know all of his you know teammates are down for the count it is just him and is and in his current present weakened state uh there is no possible way he is going to win so as i said they're either going to pull you know their ass out of their hat at the last minute or something be able to defeat them or i more likely think that it might be a runaway scenario um i mean we had flashbacks in this episode too you know in nosuke saying what was the point of all of that training when we can't you know one of us can even defeat this thing uh and then we also got a nice little um tidbit at the beginning where it showed uzai and all of his wife's at his you know his family gravesite. he poured sake on it and we're just kind of having a good time uh, and one of his wives mentioned, she was like, hey, you know, once we defeat an upper rank, let's just, let's just be done with this, you know? You know, just f forget the Shinobi past, forget the Demon Slayer corpse. Uh, let's let's just relax, you know, go about our days and live life as normal. And it's I don't think that's going to happen. Um, at the very least, Tengen May is probably dead. So, yeah, 
He doesn't have any kids to my knowledge, and none of his wives are currently pregnant to my knowledge, which was the point of having three wives, because uh, the way the shinobi work in this world anyway is they don't really care about the women. It's more like they are baby-making machines, so we're going to give you three of them to get as many siblings as possible, uh, so that way, you know, the family name lives on, the shinobi clan lives on, uh, things along those lines. But shinobi are pretty much, and in this time, and they even mention it in Demon Slayer, pretty much all, like, worn out and done and over with. Uh, they're not gonna happen. So, I don't know. It's, um, th this was just, a, a, it was a fantastic episode. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. The only reason it's not getting a 10 out of 10 is because of just that massive cliffhanger that we're getting. Uh, because we don't know the status of Inosuke. We don't know the status of Tengen. Uh, same with Zenitsu. He, we don't know if he, if he got caught up in the building collapse or not. And presumably Tanjiro is SOL. Uh, because there is no way he is going to be able to defeat both of these demons by himself. Uh, the only way I could foresee it is, alright, Nezuko, wake the hell up. Uh, time for your blood demon out to kick in. I'm gonna lose, you know, you know I'll, I'll figure out how to put you back to normal later. Um, but I don't see that happening either because we saw how bloodthirsty she got when she was in that overpowered demon state. So I feel like Tanjiro isn't going to subject her to doing that because he doesn't want her fighting. Um, he, he doesn't want her, you know, to be in that state where she then starts getting a bloodlust for humans. And that makes sense to me. You know, that uh, that definitely makes sense that she's not going to fight. I mean, she, she looked like she was pretty tuckered out anyway. You know, she's back in tiny cute form. Uh, and in the box, which Tanjiro put down the box. Holy crap. It's just, she's, I hate to say she's dead weight, but uh, she is at this point in time. You know, she's going to be safe if you put her down somewhere. They're not focused on her yet. Um, now they are because Tanjiro and her are the only one left. But uh, that is what it is. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, so if you're new here, subscribe, notification bell, like, comment down below what you want to see for future anime and cartoon related content. Uh, my name is Steve Gray. Thank you for watching. I'm going to go watch Attack on Titan now. Uh, and as always, have a good one.